Hey everyone, welcome to Sketch Day Live. <clears throat> I'm Spencer. If you're joining on Instagram, you'll want to hit up the YouTube as well. Did you get the full deal? At least I hope so. It should be working. Anyhow, hope you had a good Sunday. Um, just chilling, relaxing, all that good stuff. I wanted to sketch some shears today, so I'm just going to sketch some shears and keep it tight, keep it quick. That's what we're gonna be doing. What's up, Tom? I will get back to your message shortly, so I'm not ignoring you. FYI, David and Tom are some of our patrons. They are awesome. What's up, Rakim? I mean, sorry, <laughs> Roshan. <laughs> I combined your name into Rakim. Rakim, maybe you should go by that. Rakim, what do you think? Oh, wow, nice, Tom. Tom's been following along. He got asked if he if he does freelance work after posting some sketches after practicing. So um, let's see. Welcome Nate Palmer, new Patreon. We also have Lori, also a new Patreon. Thank you, Latrice. What's up? Checking in, Diana. All right, let's get started. So I'm using my Photoshop brushes in Adobe Fresco. That's what I'm using today. And I'm still, I told you guys last time, I'm kind of working on my accuracy and uh, deliberate style when I'm sketching digitally because one thing I tend to do is hesitate. I don't know if you guys have the same issues or not, but I'm trying to work on that. So I'm gonna be using this fine liner just to kind of sketch free here. Let's make this a little bigger, warm up. Cut over for you guys, let's check. All right, cool, we're good. And let's throw this in the iPad, boom. All right. I'm gonna remember to record this time. <laughs> What's up, Marcelo? Lost in acoustic. Hello, hello. So always warm up, of course. And just by way of information, this is done by drawing with your shoulder and your elbow, so my wrist is locked. Okay. Just like that. I promise the music will change soon. My friend Paul Sohi, I think I mentioned last time, he's producing some music for me. So we might turn it into a little bit of a fundraiser for a good cause. So he's making, he's basically making a whole album of music for the channel. So that'll be exciting. But yeah, I'm just doing some garden shares. Maybe I'll do a lawnmower. I think someone asked me to do a lawnmower a while back. We could do an electric lawnmower. Let's go ahead and move this touch control. I think I explained this last time, but this is a, a way for you to toggle your tool. This little circle here at the top left. Is the camera feed not working, Roshan? I think it's working. It should be. If it's not working, blame YouTube at this point. All right, let's do some circles. As far as the iPad I'm using, I'm using a 2018 iPad Pro, 12.9 inch. It's a little bit bigger than than the regular. Feels like a, a regular sheet of paper you might draw on. So it's partly why I like it. These circles are about two to three inches or 75 millimeters in diameter or so, 50 to 75. It's getting warm and then we'll do some ellipses on top. All right, let's do some ellipses now. And I'll go ahead and just use the circles, kind of slice them up. I'm getting a new 3D printer tomorrow. I'm excited. Maybe I'll do a live and we could we could look at the 3D printer or print something. If you'd be interested in that. I mean, you wouldn't be able to watch the whole thing print, but I could unbox it live or in a video. Either way. Screen protector. I'm just using the cheapest screen protector I can find on Amazon. That's what I use. Um, I've heard paper like is good, but I've also heard that it like wrecks the tip of your 
Apple Pencil. So I'm just using a matte screen protector, just enough to give me some resistance and cut back on the glare on the screen. Just keep going here. And then we'll jump right in. So I'll probably go for about an hour today. Um, I'm trying to decide which day I'll do my longer stream. It's a great suggestion from Matt. Maybe do like one sketch in depth, start to finish. But I like to I like to keep them keep them loose and keep them quick. All right, <clears throat> so let's get started here. Is the screen protector required? No, it's not required. It works without the screen protector. It's just whatever you like, really. Um, Paper like two has a smoother grain. Okay, cool. But I get three screen protectors for like eight bucks on Amazon. So <laughs> I'm not sure a $20 um, product is necessary. So uh, let's see. So I just pulled up some reference just real quick, just so I, I can figure out the articulation of what's happening. Um, I don't really have a way to switch to that. So We'll just make some stuff up. All right, so let's just start with um, kind of setting the stage, okay? So I'll just draw two planes, or a plane rather, like this. Let's go ahead and move this, position it a little better on the screen. And for you guys on Instagram, I am tipping the tablet. It looks better for me if I do this. So if you don't want to deal with the glare and see all this stuff, definitely hit up the YouTube. That's youtube.com slash sketchaday.com. And if you subscribe and turn on alerts, you won't miss when I post. All right. And so at this point, I like to, I mean, we can find the midpoint of this line, roughly. Let's go ahead and do that. So it wasn't too far off. Right about there. Oops. And at this point, let's draw a cross. And so this is now 90 degrees. And the reason for that is I want to be able to give some thickness to all this, all right? <laughs> What's up, Eves? Hello, hello. Oh, medical stuff. My bad. My bad. Okay. So... At this point, let's go ahead and just throw in an ellipse here. Maybe another one here. I need to make sure. Okay, I'm drawing with the fine liner. Just wanted to make sure. And now, at this point, just going to throw in an arc. And I can start to sketch in a handle. All right, so the plane is just more there for setup. But I can throw in a handle, and we can connect this handle to one side of this series of ellipses. Like I said, I'm going to try and be a bit more deliberate with my stroke today. All right, much like I would with a fine liner. Is this something just something about uh, digital sketching that makes me want to hesitate? I don't know what it is. All right, so now for the other handle. Let's go ahead and sketch down. Like so. And I'll just throw in a couple lines here for a grip. And now I gotta decide what's on the end here. So garden shear, right? We're gonna be cutting leaves and stuff or branches. So we're gonna have something thin like that. Go ahead and give this a little sharpness. And perhaps, you know, we can match match the shape on the bottom side here. Just throw in a curve. Actually, let me zoom out so I can actually compose this. All right, so I'll throw a curve like so. 
and then let's go flat and maybe just do something funky like this. All right, something like that. Now, maybe on the back side here of this tool, we could actually have like some sort of, you know, if, if there's a branch or a twig or something, you just wanna kind of cut. And I'll use the eraser. So this touch control again in the top left, if I tap on it, you'll notice it gets a little bit bigger. Okay, and now my brush is an eraser. So again, it's just a quick way for me to switch from brush to eraser if I'm using the tool, instead of having to, you know, go back to the menu bar and all that. So yeah, maybe this is just a way um, for me to cut a branch or whatever if I need to. Yeah, I'm using Adobe Fresco, so it's free. And the good thing is Photoshop brushes work with it. And if you have Creative Cloud libraries set up, you can you can be working on your computer and then quickly just switch to um, working on Fresco fairly easily. Okay, so let's say I wanna protect or keep my hand from slipping. Maybe I wanna add something here. So let's go ahead and change our profile just a little bit. Like so, maybe that stops you from from uh, your hand inadvertently slipping into something. Same thing on the bottom here. Maybe I want to protect this little blade. Um, it's, it might be, again, something I just want to have access to. So a couple things you could do. Maybe it has a slip cover. Um, maybe, you know, this shape continues down is also an option. So we could do something like this. I mean, at the same time, that kind of obscures your ability to uh, use this feature. Although you could have the branch, we could just sketch that in, you know, if the branch is here, whatever. You know, you could almost, you could almost route it through. So I think I'll keep it. I'll keep it. We'll just extend this lower portion here and continue this curve all the way through. Something like that. Yeah, I don't know what it's about digital sketching, man, but I I just notice, like when I have a paper made flare, I know exactly where it's gonna go. With this, I'm always a little bit hesitant, doing undos and zooms. I don't use quick line though, or streamline, but other than that, I do find myself being a bit more hesitant, so. Just been trying to work on that. Maybe I just need to sketch more digitally as well. It's also a strong possibility. So sketch a day live. Thanks for joining. Kind of experimenting and doing this every day and seeing how you guys like it. If it's something I want to even do. So thanks for hanging out. It's kind of convenient we're all working from home too, so your boss can't be like, hey, what are you watching? So I do appreciate it. Diana says, um, you might want to make a video of the tweaks you do for your fresco brushes in Procreate. I've not tried all of them. Yeah, they're made for they're made for fresco and Photoshop, so I, I make no claims that, you know, they will work flawlessly in Procreate, but I can take a look. I'm guessing it's the ones that are probably textured that have issues, but maybe something else you're thinking of. Yeah, I think I'll do a lawnmower next. And then if you have suggestions for uh, tomorrow's show, let me know. Be happy to take a look. So I 
think I'm going to change the tip here. Old habits. I keep switching on the the bar here on the side. What do you recommend, digital or paper? Um, if you're learning to draw, definitely sketch on paper first. It's cheaper, and you don't really develop as much confidence sketching digitally as you do uh, on paper. I think, at least that's been my experience. So, and if you're good on paper, you'll be good at good digitally, and you'll save yourself tons of money. So. Is also that because an iPad, at least this iPad Pro, cost me because I got the LTE version and a few other things um, was about fourteen hundred dollars, which is paid for itself um, just through projects and and whatever else, but it's still still a pretty high high commitment, right? So again, when I'm designing something, I like to kind of think in holistic shapes and then take bits out so here i'm going to make some tweaks so that there's an implied line okay in its state so i can erase this now and i've changed the shape of the profile but now i want to kind of resolve what's happening down here so you can just keep playing with it maybe i just do something simple like this and just have a little sharp edge to it. But again, the, the implied line is there, right? Let's just do a little cleanup on the blade. So I've got to figure out the surface transition here. So bear with me. Let's make a new layer. Oops, new layer. And I'm going to go ahead and pick red. So now I just kind of want to draw through what's happening, right? So we've got this uh, somewhat cylindrical section. And then we have this plane meeting up. And depending on, on what's happening here and where this lands, right, we're going to have a certain transition. So I just have to figure out what's happening in this spot. Um, now I'll switch to blue and kind of just draw this out you know maybe it's a line like that and then this surface would be flat and then wrap up like so and then over okay so as I'm doing my shading I just have to remember to shade in a way that reinforces this surface transition or in other words from the top you kinda have this kinda thing happening uh, would it be the other way I'm trying to think it might be the other way actually like that because that's the handle this is why uh, orthographic views are also helpful because <laughs> you can kind of figure out what's happening um, with things like your articulation points so here I'm going to add a transition and I think I'm right that it would be um, this other way but you might have some slight ramp up anyways so I'll just shade that and mostly just thinking out loud here guys Hope you're having a good Monday so far. All right, so something like that. Crank down this opacity. Let's go back to my layer. If you wanted to, you could redraw the whole thing as well. You know, when in doubt, rough it out, which is kind of what I've done. It's very rough. There is no ellipse tool in Fresco, so it's very much a freehand drawing tool. I was really encouraged uh, last night, actually. I saw Scott Robertson um, he posted online. It was cool to see because a lot of his sketches, um, you can tell there's like an ellipse template or guide being used. But the ones last night that he posted, this video, totally was uh, was freehand. I was like, yeah, freehand, man. This is good. It's good to see see some old school in the new school. Uh, let's see, Nate, are these tin snips? These are just, uh, I'm just trying to do some garden shears or something along those lines. So I'm trying to figure out the surface transition in this area right now is what I'm, what I'm trying to do. So to make this a little bit easier, I'm actually gonna modify this a little bit more. 
which kind of looks weird now. Because what I'm trying to do is have this feel like it's actually transitioning out to the pivot point. But if it's down here, as low as it is, actually, no, it should work. It should work. I'll just undo that, that crap. OK. Here we go. There is a quick line tool in Fresco. Um, but again, I like being able to just move between uh, Photoshop and Fresco. There's cloud documents. So whatever I'm doing here is automatically backed up and available in in my Photoshop on my desktop. So uh, let's see. Um, you guys on Instagram, I can't watch both chats, so pardon me if you feel I'm ignoring you, but better to hang out on the YouTube. Okay. That's the chat I am watching, but happy to share the stream. All right, so let's turn that off now. And I think I am going to redraw this section. So what I'll do is just make a new layer. And let's go ahead and crank the opacity down. And then I'll just focus on this little area here. Get my ellipses in. Almost got that one. All right, here we go. Okay, so the goal here, just cleaning up these ellipses and maybe some of these articulation connection points. So that is a nice thing about working digitally is you can focus on certain things. Yeah, maybe I'll just redraw the whole thing. <laughs> Be a bit more deliberate, like I said. So sketch a day live, thanks for joining. Appreciate you being here. Special shout out to the Patreons. We got a bunch of you here as well. So yeah, I'll just go ahead and redraw it. And again, just trying to be deliberate, not trace, just like I would on paper. Let's drop this opacity a little bit more. Diana says it's 1 a.m. Where are you at? Are you in India? Where are you guys at? What's up, Matt? You never get notified? That's weird. Did you change some settings on your phone or computer? I don't know. YouTube just tells me it's going to work, so I just believe him, but maybe not. Um... Would it be better to have like a calendar invite? I could do, um, you know, if, if you set up some, I don't know, I could set up a calendar thing. See if that worked. You guys let me know. Because I don't really know what the best answer is. Um, For notifying I did try um, <clears throat> Instagram this handle feels kind of anemic oh I didn't finish the other line uh, I didn't I did try Instagram uh, reminders for a little bit 
I don't know how that was for you. A few people signed up for them. So yeah, I don't know what works best. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna erase these lines. And now we have kind of a consistent look and direction and flow. Yeah, I kinda wanna bring back, bring back my little return here. Just a little bit. Just a little cleanup. Okay, zoom out. Let's go. Boom. <clears throat> and I'll turn off my under sketch. And there's my there's my sketch available. Okay. Still a bit off on this ellipse, but I'll tweak this one. So just doing some shading with lines here on these parts that are going to be shiny. Hello Gayatri, how to be innovative while designing any product? That's a very big question. Um, I have a project coming up that may help, but I would say creativity is about finding unexpected connections between things. So you don't always have to reinvent the wheel per se. Sometimes it's just identifying the unexpected <clears throat> and using that. But yeah, I do have a project coming up that will help give you some ideas. Just a little secondary line here. It's been way too long in this, so we'll do quick color. Then we'll get our lawnmower in. I could do a riding lawnmower, I guess. That would satisfy a lot of you car fans. But I'm thinking of an electric lawnmower of some sort. I guess I could keep this black and white. That would be interesting. The only color I really have to add is on the handle here. So it may seem weird, but I'm, I'm actually not doing this. I'm trying to do this. Okay, this feels kind of sloppy and, and uh, not very considered. So I'm trying to actually lift the pencil after each stroke. 
because that's how I that's how I draw in real life. So again, drawing digitally means that I'm just translating <clears throat> how I normally draw into the digital package. This is Adobe Fresco, yes. Do those pop up, Matt, um, when I schedule on the YouTube channel? I'm just curious. Just gonna shade in some reflective lines here. Again, if you're not sure about reflections and where to put lines and stuff, just look at shiny objects. Um, comic book art is another good resource if you're interested in doing better line work and expressing things with lines because a lot of those illustrations are, um, it's actually really fascinating. They do, they do pencil first and then they do ink and then they do the color and oft times it's done by three different people. So someone does the pencil work, someone else does the ink and then someone else does the color. But you can, if you ever get a behind the scenes look, you'll see um, kind of how that's done and how things like texture or reflections are represented. So it's a good resource if you're trying to get a bit more confidence and be a bit more deliberate with your lines and how you express things. Also, if this is reflective, you're gonna get the cylinder reflecting back in to this blade. So that's what I'm doing right there, just with my lines. Not so much here though. And that's because this is at a slight angle. So if it's at an angle, you're gonna get reflection more like this. So slightly slightly distorted in there. And then just for general shading, let's go ahead and go from dark to very light. Just some style dots, what I call that. <clears throat> yeah, this is Adobe Fresco. Um, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. They're normally amongst the other th Ah, okay, okay. I think, um, yeah, I'll have to just look into that and figure out. What's up, Jules? Nolan, hey, hey. Uh, yes, Fabian, this is on an iPad, iPad Pro. And it is Adobe Fresco. All right, so now I'm gonna jump to one of my marker brushes here. And again, in Fresco, you can pick a brush and then um, add it to your favorites just by tapping the star. So I actually have all my favorites here. You know, I've got this basic marker. So uh, let's use green. Should we use green? Maybe a teal for this garden tool. All right, so we'll make this bigger. And let's try and shade this like I would with a real marker. So drop the saturation a bit. Okay, just build up the value. Unlike a real marker, however, I can erase. So that's something I can do. And I can change the size. So that's also nice. It's also pressure sensitive. There's buildup available. So 
So build up a shadow core there and there. And let's just shade the body. Again, just trying to be deliberate like I would be with a real marker. So roll call, I'm curious, what do you guys all do for work? How'd you discover this? Were you just browsing YouTube and then it popped up or Instagram? Are you all accountants? This is all with just one uh, marker or brush, by the way. So again, you can set it so it has that build up. I think I changed the, the brush mode on this one to, let me, let me double check here in my brush settings. Transfer. So it has all the Photoshop, oops, I was on the eraser. It has all the Photoshop brush controls. So it'll pull those in. I can change the blending mode right now. It's set to multiply. So that's why I'm getting uh, these deeper, darker values with just one marker. So kind of handy. I don't have to switch the color and all that. The Diva Diaries, M-A-I-A in design, out of practice, found me on, on Instagram. Thanks. Welcome. I'm an industrial designer. I, I, I just like to draw, um, but I do consult and do regular design work as well. My favorite digital brush, someone's asking. Um, I like speckle brushes, they're fun, I'll show you one. So I do have a speckle brush in my set. Um, I think it's called Spatter. Yeah, so I can put just a little texture onto this handle if I want. So I like these, they're fun. Um, I don't know if you guys follow Roshan um, as a designer out of the Netherlands, but he's got a great set of um, heavy texture brushes, pencils and so forth. So I'm not sure if, did you release those yet, Roshan, or no? I got, I've gotten to test them, but um, yeah, you guys should check those out. So this brush I actually sampled from real spray paint that I did and then so it, it's a completely unique brush in that sense that regard okay just a little texture there is sketching on iPad more convenient than sketching on the Wacom tablet you have to decide what's convenient so if you like to um, sketch on the go then yes I enjoy drawing on an iPad if you're someone who likes to sit at a desk then a Wacom tablet may be more convenient for you. So it's all about whatever you like. Let's go back to my marker here. And so for this one, now I'm just gonna kinda wash over here and let's use a slightly bluish gray, okay. And now I'll just erase what I don't need. There are some weird things about Fresco too though, but again, I do like that I can just literally open up my computer and the file will be there with cloud documents. So that's handy. Also, if you have uh, color palettes, you can actually um, pull these in. So there's a My Library thing that pops up. I can tap on that, and this may have colors that I've used in other um, projects that I might have wanted to save. So if you're working on like a, a big design project and you all are using the same colors, you can uh, 
you can leverage that in Fresco using Creative Cloud Libraries. Matt says, great talk yesterday on diversity. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was a, it was a good chat. Um, got together with Advanced Design and they invited me and a few others to share our experiences about being minorities, minority designers, everything from education to just professional life. Um, certainly an interesting time we're, we're in right now. So yeah, I was happy to be a part of that. Okay, almost done here, guys. And then we'll do our quick lawnmower. So I'm trying to keep these to about an hour. I spent way too long on this one. But I'll get the hang of it. I'll figure it out. And like I mentioned before, I'll probably do a longer stream as well. Maybe just focus on one sketch for the entire you know, hour and a half, two hour show. Let's see how tight we can get stuff. All right, so we're pretty much there. I do want to show you one other thing. Um, so I did make these wash brushes as well as, pardon me, it's like watercolor texturizer. So you can almost use this to make backgrounds if you will. And that's kind of my thought and what how I was, how I was thinking about using them in my drawings. So these aren't super organized, so let me see if I can find it. There's this texture wash, and we're just gonna make it huge, right? And now I can pick the color. Uh, I'm trying to think what a good, I could do orange, but that might be weird. Right, that might be, no, that actually works. So let's make this huge, okay? And on a new layer behind, I'm just gonna tap, like so. And because I didn't put white down first, I actually have to go and erase everything, but that's fine. So now I can erase. You could erase or you could mask, whichever way you prefer working. But just a quick way to get a nice textured background in. So yeah, that's that's how I use those. Um, if you've picked up the brush pack and you're like, what what are these for? They're weird. Um, <laughs> that's kind of my thought on how I would use them personally. And then to further separate the background, you can always introduce a bit of rim light and effect. The original Spencil is in here as well. Let's see, right there, boom. So I can use just a nice white Just kind of come in here and help separate the sketch from the background just a little bit. I like it too because it's somewhat translucent, so it's not completely uh, negating the orange. Whoa, that was weird. It's not completely negating the orange. It's more of a, a nice blend. It's actually wrong. This should be something like that. So I'll, I'll, I'll tweak that in a little bit. And then we'll do the lawnmower, I promise. But at this point, we're probably going to go overtime. So 
unless I keep it as a, a very quick sketch. Okay, so I'm gonna modify what I did here and we'll just fudge it, make it, make it quick and dirty. But I gotta fix that, it's gonna drive me crazy. Made some mistakes on the football helmet I did the other day and on the other one, so. I mean, there's always mistakes. Always. All right, maybe just some some little logo indication there. You know, this is our our limb cutter. Let me jump back to the fine liner. It is a somewhat textured fine liner as well because I wanted to replicate the feeling of drawing on paper, at least the appearance a bit. my twig cutter. All right, so something like that. Okay. So there's my shears. Um, let's see. Latrice, currently an administrative assistant. Cool, man. Working on drawing and designing t-shirts. Thanks for chiming in. Any tips on how to decide what to do in the background? Um, not really, you just kind of have to figure out what works for you, which probably isn't the answer you want. All right. So now it's saving this document to the cloud so again, if I open up my laptop in a few seconds, um, it should be on my laptop, but I'm not gonna disconnect and show you that right now. So let's make another one. I'm just gonna do this letter size. In Fresco, you do have to rotate the canvas, unfortunately. So just remember, if, if you are using the app and you're, you, you're wondering why it won't uh, locate itself, that is why. All right. So let's go. And once again, it, it defaults to the sketching brush here, but not the library brush. So I'm gonna have to go back to sketch day brushes and then let's use the blue point today. And I'm gonna pick a nice blue color here. I don't know why the color reset. I wonder if I can reset the brush, let's see. Ah, there we go. So that's the default setting. So I tapped the little button at the bottom of the panel here and it kind of reset things. All right, let's do a quick lawnmower. Fabian says he enjoys the, he, they, they enjoy the live stream. The daily, thank you. Check out the YouTube too. Also, there's a Discord link. Um, you can check that out, join. Tom likes to hang out there, Jordan, a few others. So if you're looking for help, um, you can reach out to people there, check it out. Okay, so let's do a quick lawnmower. I'm gonna do an electric mower. Okay, so when I'm doing something like this, I wonder, actually, I'm gonna rotate my canvas. So let me go back and we'll draw vertically this way, all right? So it's kind of like when I draw a vacuum cleaner, I like to kind of have some line or direction for the handle and then I can do a little base like so, all right? And this will become the base for my lawnmower. Not bad, that was my guesstimate on the center and it happened to be the center, all right? And then you're gonna have wheels, right? So you wanna put something in for where your wheels are gonna be, maybe a couple vertical lines. If you are just freehanding this, freestyling, freewheeling, freeballing, uh, one thing you can do is just imagine these things instead of committing to 
drawing them on the paper. Just mocking in a little bit of a handle here. I actually have an electric mower. They're quite nice. I have a Ego electric lawnmower. Um, I mean, minus a few headaches with them. One of those headaches is the battery longevity. So if you have a really big yard, it can be, it can be a little frustrating. So now that I kind of have the structure in place, just get some mounts, hinge positions. And I am using my blue point. It's called a blue point because the color actually comes with the brush as well as a default. So you can always reset the brush like I did, get that blue back. And what's cool about it too is as I hit the color, much like a real ballpoint pen, you do get that intensity. Go light, press harder, go dark. But then I can shade over again, go darker, and then get even darker. So it's one of my favorite favorite brushes. I think someone asked me what my favorite digital brushes are. Okay, so let's keep going here. Something like that. Tom says the after show is very insightful too. Yeah, I, I didn't catch the after show, unfortunately. I'll figure out the middle here, kind of like we did on the other one. Sometimes you just kind of have to sketch light and then figure out the rest. Um, so you Instagrammers, just fair warning, there's about seven minutes left on your stream, maybe five. So just be warned. I probably should have put more perspective on this guy. Actually, it's not too bad. Yeah, and then maybe this I can show, you know, extends out or something. Since I ran out of space on the paper, we'll cheat. Keep this light for now because I need to get the main compartment in. And I kind of have thematically this like angular thing happening. So let's see if we can pull some of that into the engine or the motor and some of the overall look here. Let's move this up. We can also cheat just a little bit, just a little bit. I'm just gonna stretch this <laughs> a little bit higher here so it fills the page. Don't tell anyone. It's not, it's not an exact science or method there. Okay, so let's get our wheels in. All right, so these are gonna be my wheel axes. It's always hard when you're drawing um, something that's not a car, at least if you're used to drawing cars, because I want to like make these car wheels, but they're not car wheels. All right, something like that. And now let's get the overall shape of the mower. I'm just gonna get a bottom in like so. Yeah, I think I'll keep this mower um, I actually hate having a lawn. I gotta tell you guys. <laughs> My house has a lawn and I kinda hate it. Just cause it's like wasting money. Is this not Photoshop or a version of it for tablet? No, this is uh Adobe Fresco, so it's their, they've taken all their drawing stuff and put it into one app. That's what this is. Okay, 
All right, I need a spot for the blades, at least to show the blades here. I'm just gonna treat this like a ballpoint pen sketch or b row for those who like to call them b rows So much like I would a b row we can kind of build things up in value. Go light. I'm trying to treat treat it not like a pencil. Maybe something like that. Okay, so you can kind of see the shape coming out now. Hopefully. As far as the battery goes, just figuring out where to put that. You know, maybe this is more of a, a pass through or handle. The shape on the top, so I can pull this down, go down here, and then now give this a bit of thickness. So that I could almost grip this portion and, and lift it up if I wanted to. All right, and if you want to show that, just add some shading. Again, treat it like a ballpoint pen, like you would. You can go heavy and just build up with that brush. So yeah, this is this is definitely one of my favorites um, that I've made. Period. <laughs> um, as far as my my brush creation efforts have gone. I know a few of you have asked for brushes in Sketchbook Pro and there's a couple other apps. Um, if you're super interested and if I get enough interest, I'll, I'll go through the trouble of, because it, it takes a lot of time, guys, I don't know if you know, um, but it really does take a lot of time to at least put together brushes I would be proud to use and happy to use. It takes a lot of time, so let me know if you're serious and how serious you are about having those brushes. Okay, Instagrammers, it's probably gonna peace out. Um, so if you wanna catch the rest of this, head over to youtube.com slash sketchday.com. Happy Monday. That was actually perfect timing. The stream like literally just ended on YouTube. Or sorry. Uh, Instagram. It's like perfect timing. David is the coordinator for electrical contractor, works on several large scale construction projects. That's cool. How's the, the weather in Southern California? Hopefully good. It got super cold here this weekend. Like I had to turn on my heater again, which is weird because it's June. But it was like, oh, and it was hailing yesterday. Just absolutely crazy. Okay, maybe, maybe a little area here on the back for some sort of bag or chute. I like having a bag on my lawnmower. I used to hate mowing the lawn as a kid. It was just like always the worst. But as an adult, I enjoy the extra exercise I can get. Something funky happening with this tension in that corner, but I'm gonna ignore it for now because I just wanna wrap this up for you guys. But again, I like to call out these things so that you can kind of learn from me and my mistakes and just realize like design is is really just a, an iterative process. There's 
There's times when you get things right, and there's a lot of times you get things wrong, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect at the onset, right? Like if this is a real product, you draw it a million times until you draw it until you're confident enough, then you cat it up, meaning throw it into a 3D program, evaluate, all those good things. Um, if you're fortunate enough, sometimes you have an engineering package to work off. That just means everything's kind of set. You don't have to worry as much, but. All right, we're getting there, we're getting there. Let's go ahead and add some shading. Actually, this is wrong too, because of where. Where I put this cutout. Okay, so I need to tweak this. Glad I caught that. Okay, so it's more like this. I can still shade, but I just need to change this to more of a light shade. And then on this corner, if this is rounded, then I can shade in like this. So hopefully you see what I just did. It makes sense. Okay, much better. Although it's kind of a weird lawnmower. Like I was saying, maybe this is some sort of light. Would you need a light on a lawnmower? I guess if you're like mowing at night. <laughs> I've never actually mowed at night. I did mow my lawn in the rain the other day. All right, let me act like I actually care about this wheel. All right, here we go. Yeah, you're spoiled in Southern California, for real. For real. I'm cheating on that surface, look the other way. Just look the other way, people. All right, let's get a bit more shading in, make sure things are popping where they need to pop. darker on this back section so I get some contrast in play again treating this like I would a real ballpoint pen sketch Got some shadow there. So now I'm just gonna pop the line weights on this upper section now that I kind of know at least 
what I might be doing. Maybe this is some little lever that, you know, I could pop out to help this slide up. Weird arrows, but um, maybe that's what that is on the side. If that were the case, I would need to, you know, perhaps show a detailed view of that. <laughs> Matt says only sci only psychopaths mow their lawn at night. Probably, probably so. All right, so let me guys let not let me guys. <laughs> you guys let me know what do you want to see tomorrow on the show. Remind me. I know we had a suggestion for medical equipment. I totally spaced it. So. Uh, maybe I can do like a ventilator tomorrow or something like that. Knee brace. Something along those lines. As always, a pleasure to hang out and draw with you guys. Thanks for being the best. Um, I do mean this, that some of you have reached out, checked in with everything going on, asked me how I'm doing. It means a lot that you care. You see us, see me. So thank you. All right, just a little bit more here. I did have this kind of section in the middle. Maybe this is some sort of control area. Actually, this should probably go down. Should it? Nah, I'll just make it cool. But I don't need this line. resolve this a little bit sometimes when you sketch like something looks good on the left but then on the right it's like really weird this is one of those instances so I need to make sure that I'm, I'm being a bit more careful about symmetry thank you Nate Nate's our newest patreon hit me up he'll be receiving his sticker soon we also have Lori uh, Gregory white do I get the ballpoint pen tool in appropriate no um, but my plan is, Gregor, to release updates for the Procreate Pack. And if you've gotten it in the past, um, I'll post about it. And then you, I don't have a clean way to do this. So if you just reach out um, and let me know that you did make a purchase, I'll, I'll just update you. Right. Sakshi is asking, can we make these digital sketches using a mouse on some other app? Um, I guess you could. I think that would be really hard, though. I feel like that would be really hard to do. All right, what I'm really trying to do here, so I'm, I think I'm being limited by this weird shape. Let's start with the middle. So what I want is, you know, if this is the mower, like say this is the handle, I want a control that like sticks out, something like that. 
right? So your hand is kind of right here. Okay, and you're pushing this way. So I want there to be some sort of control <laughs> on the mower. So let's start with figuring out our angles. We'll get a plane in and then we'll have a better, more accurate way to show that. So let's start with a line. We know where the center is. And let's draw a plane. Just because of where this is though, it's kind of awkward actually, but I'll just do it like this. And then now I want this part to be a little narrower, like so. And let's go behind just a little bit and then we can come down. And get some sort of control deck in place. Yeah, that looks way better. way better so yeah maybe maybe some sort of you know modes that you can set actually those buttons are huge <laughs> so for now I'll just leave it blank but um, you can always add a note And if there were specific specs, we could write those out. It might be speed, it might be, you know, whether the power drive is activated or whatever the case may be. So yeah, guys, hit me up in the Discord, comments, messages on Instagram, whatever. Um, let me know what you'd like to see. I'd be happy to take a look, see if I can facilitate that. But I should be back around the same time tomorrow. My apologies for starting a little bit late. Had some stuff to take care of, so I had to move the stream. But 9 a.m. Pacific, roughly, is kind of what I'm shooting for. This wheel's a little bit way out there, so let's move it in, make a selection. And now I can move this just in a little bit, maybe even rotate it slightly. Scale for perspective, hit done. And now, let's see, deselect. I'm just gonna continue the shading on the top and then we'll just intensify where we need a shadow core. Or just to mask, mask some of this right here. Also, my intention in creating the Procreate and Photoshop brushes was not to uh, necessarily recreate everything that's in each. So in the Photoshop, set you've got some washes like those big ink washes that I used in the procreate set um, airbrushes are a little bit different as well um, but in both I wanted to have something worthy of being called the spencil so worked really hard on that in the Photoshop set I was able to achieve like I said this blue point effect and so that's kind of one of the unique things about that set so all right, so there we go. There's our electric lawnmower. Um, Akeep says, UK is being the UK right now. 10% sun, 40% rain. I <laughs> feel in the rest of gray. Awesome. Thank you, Nate. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for hanging out. All right, so that's our show for today. Thank you, it was fun. Um, love the comments, the chat, all that good stuff. A special shout out to the Patreons once again. If you have not gotten your sticker, hit me up 
let me know through messages. I'd be happy to mail that out to you today. Um, if you've been a Patreon for more than two months and you haven't gotten your free brushes, also let me know. Those are available to you guys. And love and peace to all of you. Um, just like I've been ending the show, um, it's a turbulent time for a lot of people. So appreciate the love, the outreach, and um, I'm not the only person in your lives, I hope. So I hope that you extend that to others as well. Just listen, hear our stories, and then decide for yourself what you want to do about it, okay? Um, I'll be back tomorrow around the same time. Hit me up, send me messages, comments, let me know what you'd like to see. Um, if I don't hear anything else, I'm just going to focus on maybe some something medically related for the request that, that I got um, before. So until then, peace out. Love you guys.